I didn't know who's the starting five for the Bulls. You got a Bulls hat on. Who's the starting five? I have no fucking clue. <laughs> my, my point. My point. My point. Okay. There's a lot of dudes. Hey, you niggas, hold on. Way. Hold on. How y'all Bulls fans and y'all don't know the starting five? Though? Yeah, yeah. You only prove my point right now. Well, you prove my point to what I'm talking about tonight. The <clears throat> Yo. You know what? I, Paxson. He hit the three. You know, got three rings. My man, blah, blah. Who the hell said that he can make decisions for the whole squad? Damn. Here's the thing. Here's the thing with Paxson, right? And this is much, and it's funny because there's some parallels between how Paxson has run and him and Gar Foreman have run the Bulls and how Joe Dumars ran the Detroit Pistons for a while. There was a time where the Detroit Pistons were really fucking successful with Joe Dumars running the thing, right? He made some really timely trades. He made some really timely draft picks outside of that Darko pick where he really should have drafted Carmelo Anthony. He picked up Darko. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, But after a certain point, Joe Dumars was kind of like on a, like some of the decisions he started making later on in his tenure were kind of questionable. And I think what's going on with the Bulls right now is that early on, John Paxson and Gar Foreman put together a pretty nice motherfucking squad who were contending for a champion, like was was a contender in the East for the championship. They ran against LeBron James in the Miami Heat at the same time. And I think that really, and, and Derrick Rose's injury problems kind of stunted the growth of that squad. But at a certain point, some of the decisions that John Paxson and Gar Foreman have made has crippled the Bulls' progress going forward. So like, I, I can remember when... Uh, what was that? When the Bulls decided that they were going to trade Derrick Rose, like at a certain point, man, like the team at that point had like plateaued. It was dead. Like it wasn't going no further. Like Derrick Rose was always hurt. Joe Kim Noah was always hurt. And it was like, yo, we need to finally figure out a way. We go, we got to move forward with what we got. So they started moving guys around. They, they moved, uh, they moved, they moved on from Joe Kim Noah. They moved on from Derrick Rose. Then they had Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler was a good two way player. Defensive and defensive and offensively, yes. right? Yes. Hold on, I'm with you. Hold on, because you, <laughs> I'm with you, because when they traded Jimmy Butler away, that's when I'm like, man, what the fuck are they doing? Exactly. What the fuck are they doing? Exactly. Because you had a legitimate star who had just resigned with the Bulls, just resigned with them, and then you know it, it was talk about his relationship with you know Thibodeau and or, or better yet, the, the the problems with the Bulls became came. When John Paxson and Gar Foreman signed, uh, what's this coach's name? Uh, Hoiberg. When they decided to sign Hoiberg. Oh, God. When they decided to sign Hoiberg and they stuck behind Hoiberg and got rid of Jimmy Butler, that's when the Bulls went to shit. And I haven't really been a fan of the front office of the Bulls since. Because every decision that was the since shit they could have did. Every, every decision since has been questionable as fuck. And this is why I don't know who the starting five of my own fucking favorite team is because I refuse to watch them. I'm like, yo, this is some bullshit. I'm not gonna watch them. And <laughs> like I can admit when my team is trash, man. My team right now is trash. Like I, I can't watch I can be a lifelong fan, but I can also be realistic and know that my team ain't shit right now. And right now with Gar Foreman and John Paxson running shit, my team ain't shit. I can rock my bullshit proudly because I'm I'm proud of the history, but fuck the team that we got right now. I don't know who the fuck these dudes is. Well, I'll say this. I agree. Everything started when they uh, everything started when they got that dumbass coach, okay? And they wanted to pull him and say that he was good and all that other shit, and he wasn't shit. The trades, you, you, you got it on the head, man. Everything trickled down from there. So right now, okay, let's go present day. Last year, they traded everybody, everybody, everybody. It wasn't just one. They, they got rid of the whole starting five. They man. tanked. Here's the thing. They were tanking yeah. last year. They, they were tanked. tanking. They, they, were, they were getting rid of some of the best players. They were trying to tank the shit. They lost a lot of games that they really didn't need to lose because they thought by if they went on ahead with the tanking shit that they were going to get a top five pick. That shit didn't even work out for them. They got the seventh fucking pick. They didn't even get a top three or five. They, they dropped the number seven. So the tanking shit didn't even work for them. Well, wait a minute. 
But here's the thing. If this is about money, and see, I'm about the money. When it comes to it, the Bulls got bread. They got bread. They can go out here and start getting some of these big boys, these all-stars, perennial players, whatever the case may be. And they didn't even do that. They started signing people for like two-year deals, like some wash dudes. You would just talk about Hibbert. Hibbert is 7'4". He might be slow, but he's effective. And he's more effective than any center the Bulls have right now. And Paxson, I don't know if they're trying to look long-term, but, yo, I remember when the NBA draft used to be a big deal. The top five <laughs> would be just – but everybody want them. I don't even know who the top five was. Nigga, I don't know who none of these kids exactly. is, man. Exactly. And, no, exactly. no. I do. I do. I do. Uh, well, well, I can't say the top five, but I know I know a few three faces in the draft, though. That was the thing. Okay. Like, well, well, do you know who we got? <laughs> exactly. Who, the Bulls? Yeah. Who the fuck is Wendell? Nah, I, de- I definitely <laughs> don't know who y'all got. Yeah, that's the thing, too, man. Like, the NBA draft, man, I remember – I can remember a time, man, where I was so excited about the NBA draft because, for one – well, and, again, it goes back to, like, you know, the, the era in which we came up in where right. you saw guys develop. You saw guys in college, and they became stars in college. So you got a chance to see guys like Chris Webber come up. You got a chance to see guys like Shaquille O'Neal come up. You got a chance to see guys like Jamal Mashburn and uh, uh, Anthony Hardaway and like all of these guys. Yeah, I said Shaq. You you got a chance to see these guys develop, and you knew by the time they got to the league, like, yo, man, he's going to be a beast when he gets to the league, right? Now it's to a point where, like, so many of these guys, and it's not that I knock the kids because I don't. If you got a chance to get to the if you got a chance to get to the money, go get it. But it's get to a point. Money. But if it's to it's to a point now where the guys are like, yo, they one and done. Like the only reason they even going to college now is because the NBA forces them to do so. Like they got to play at least one season. So now you don't really get a chance to watch a guy develop into the player he should be by the time he gets to the NBA. So you got a lot of these dudes who come in. He's a top five, top ten pick. And he might not develop into the player he's supposed to be until five years into his career because he they, they're like developing this dude over that course of time, you know. And okay, um, Here, here's the issue though, I'm not talking about the rookies. The Bulls got money to spend. They got money to spend, and they go get somebody who should be cleaning toilets. Here's the thing though, Cliff. Okay? Here's the thing. If I'm with the rookies. Hold on, hold on. Here's the thing, though. When it comes to the Bulls having money, it makes no difference whether or not they have money or not if nobody wants to come to play for you. It makes no difference. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. I know why. Because they got Horbrick. They got that weak-ass coach. Well, it's not just that, though. <laughs> it's not just that. You think about, like, I think the Bulls, for as, like, you know, because the Bulls, as an organization, have been shooting themselves in the foot since Michael Jordan walked off the court for the last time for them. And the reason that I say that is because yes, even going back into like Jerry Krause days where Jerry Krause in the front office were trying to take credit for what happened on the court. So you, even when Michael Jordan was walking the court for the bulls, there was, there was beef between the, the, the front office and the players. And so guys around the league, like, yo man, if I, I got to deal with that shit, why do I want to go play for them when like the front office is always in, like in like always meddling with what's going on with the core group? You know what I'm saying? So now you got you, I remember like there was a time when like um remember when I want to say like Grant Hill and Tim Duncan all those guys were like free agents and shit. The Bulls had money to spend back then too. Guess what? Everybody walked past the Bulls. Grant Hill went to Orlando. Tim Duncan said, "Fuck it, I'm gonna go back to San uh, San Antonio." Tracy McGrady said, fuck it, I'm going to go to Orlando too. You know what I'm saying? Like, they had money then. It was like the attitude around the Bulls was like, yeah, they got money to spend, but I don't know if I want to deal with the people in the front office. And I think a lot of that over the course of the time, even like, this shit, this is almost 20 years going now. But I think a lot of that has to stem from the way that the front office is has operated and it's alienated a lot of players in the league to where they're like, you know, you know, as, as much as Chicago is the third largest market in the NBA, I don't really want to fuck those dudes in the front office. And so a lot of guys don't no, a lot of those dudes don't even don't even bother to even consider Chicago. Think about when uh, LeBron was a fucking free agent, when Dwayne Wade was a free agent. Like they use Chicago to a certain degree. Like, OK, Chicago, like everybody came to Chicago and, and heard they pitch. But they didn't even sign with Chicago. Think about Carmelo Anthony. Think about Carmelo Anthony. Hold on, hold on. 
Think about Carmelo Anthony. Carmelo Anthony had an opportunity to come to Chicago Bulls when they still he had Derrick Rose. He when came they, here. Hold on. He came here. He, yeah, he came there. He, he, they still had Derrick Rose. They still had Joe Kim Noah. They still had a little window where they could have made some noise. Jo- and he opted to say, he said, fuck it. I'm going to stay in New York. Right. This is why I really didn't have a whole lot of sympathy for Car- Carmelo Anthony when he was on some, you know, I got to get the fuck up out of here. Cause he was like, yo, you had an opportunity to move and you didn't. So he came to Chicago. Didn't even, he said, fuck it. And he went back to New York. So I think the, the, the attitude around the front office with, Chicago, with the, with the bulls has poisoned the attitude of players even wanting to come to play there. It's the, it's the third largest market in the league. But I think the attitude of the front office and how the front office has dealt with players has poisoned the idea of free agents wanting to come to Chicago. I think it's something you're not talking about that is bigger than all that. What's that? Nobody wants to be in Mike's shadow. Well, that, you hmm. Mike when he was l- l- listen, Mike O'Jordan, look, six rings. Look, Carmelo, Derrick Rose, LeBron, Kobe, all them niggas want his shit. And guess what's going to happen? Kobe at one point wanted to come to Chicago. Uh, okay. He was trying to force a trade to Chicago. That's another conversation. I'm, I'm just That's saying. Another, I'm just saying. I, I don't. I don't think it's. I don't even think it's that, man. I don't think it's they. Like at the end of the day, man. Like if if if, if it's that, then Chicago ain't gonna never get nobody. If they if they worried about I gotta come out of, out of the shadow with Michael Jordan. Like it's been 20 years since Michael Jordan played for the Chicago Bulls. At a certain point, at a certain point, it's gotta be what the fuck is going on with that front office that is keeping guys who. T- from wanting to come to that team to play, because Michael Jordan ain't walking through that door no more. Like, like that's twenty years right. ago. Right. That's true. Right. That's true. Twenty years I don't ago. Need to bring this up, but it's bigger than the Bulls then, because every Chicago team has had a history of getting a chip and getting rid of everybody, except for the Cubs right now. Not because I'm a Cubs fan, but like seriously, the look. The Bears, man, I'm enjoying listening to y'all Bulls season. fan whining right now. I ain't gonna even the stop next, it. Go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, I mean, this is not a this is not a Bulls thing. This is a Chicago thing, and I'm just going off of what your point is, man. Everybody in Chicago will look and be like, oh, I get a chip, but then they're going to get rid of me. But my whole thing right now is John Paxson, okay? If John Paxson has, and I'm going to say he should have the clout to go out here and get some ballers, he's just weak. He's weak. He's weak as hell, Okay. He got three rings. He got something to back up why he, you know, is telling players to come to the Bulls, all that other stuff. Melo, I ain't paying attention to that. I ain't paying attention to LeBron or Kobe because they're not going to come here. They don't want to be behind Mike. They're going to have to go out here get some new players who's never had anything. They want to get paid and build a team around them and start from a new. Paxson, he ain't got it, and they think he does. And when they hired Hoiberg? Iowa, this dude is trash, man. Hold on, on. I, I I agree with you wholeheartedly on that. And I, the, the point that I'm making is, it's going to take a change in leadership in the front office, and it's going to take a change in leadership at the head coach position before you may see some movement where players want to come to Chicago. But right now, nobody Fire wants Paxton. to nobody wants to come to Chicago. <laughs> Because of the way that they've treated even some of their best players, most recently Jimmy Butler by shipping his ass off when Jimmy Butler was the best thing going for them and they could have built around him. Period. Period. Bottom line. Period. So, but that's Paxson. This all leads back to Paxson, not Hoybert. Paxson's the one saying this is what she would do, what, well, what, what, uh, what we should do. Well, yeah, there's that too, but I'm saying there is no Hoyberg without Paxson. That's what I, and I'm saying right now, Hoyberg. Is, is, is Hoiberg is given, and this is something that I think Walt will agree with. Hoiberg has been given a leash lo- a lot longer than Dwayne Casey may have been given. Mm, we, right? we don't know that. That's true. We can't say that. That's true. We can't say that. How come we can't? We can't say that. How he come we can't? He just got the job. He just got the job. I'm sorry. Did he just get the job? He, Let's look Hoy, at No, nah, Hoiberg been there for on. about three or four years hold now. Hold on, hold on. Let me. Let, we got Google at our at our fingertips, man. Let's, Hold on. Let's check it out. Let's, let's, let's <laughs> we got the Googles at our fingertips. Hold <laughs> on. <laughs> All I'm saying is, is this, man. Paxson has been in the position for how long? Okay, how long? And I and 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 don't let me. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. How long has Jimmy Butler yeah. been in uh in Minnesota? Uh, since oh, yeah. last year. Since yeah. last year. 
So I think Jimmy Butler played two seasons under Hoiberg. So it's probably been like three, three, almost three, almost, it's got to be three to four seasons Hoiberg been with the Bulls. It might be five, but he, I think he on his fourth. I still say Hoiberg is his weakest. Paxson, we need some killers back there, man. Hoiberg is about as soft as my son. He's two. Come on. Okay, it's been it's been three seasons. It's been three seasons. He's been there three seasons. It's been three. He's been okay, three so seasons. yeah, going on his fourth. Okay, so a lot, of, but a lot of the problem with 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 these front offices now is they're not basketball guys. They're 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 numbers guys, and that's where the uh, the separation is coming into with the front offices and the players. Like, um, if you it, you got to have a you got to have some type of balance. You know, with the numbers guys, and you got to have some basketball guys in the front office too. Because if you got a bunch of guys that's just looking at analytics and, and and this and that, and they don't they don't know the game, then you're gonna have a bad team. That's just what it, that's just what it boils down to. Let me ask you something. If you got the money, okay, and there's some players out there who got G, and they're in it for the money. They don't even care about getting the ring, but they some hoopers, all right. Go out there and recruit them. At least get to playoffs. Sell some fucking tickets. I'm not saying get out here and put together the 98 Bulls. That's not going to happen. It's not going to happen with the Golden State Warriors or Miami. It's not happening. How about put together some thirsty snakes that can hoop? God, make it entertaining for me. That hat you got on your head, how about it make it worth your time? That $39.99 hat that you bought at Lids, make it worth that $39.99. Right. What I'm saying to you though, Cliff, bro, is that you can have all the motherfucking money in the world. It ain't gonna make no difference if don't nobody want to come and take it. Like you could say all day long, you could say you could say all day long, like so. Yeah, somebody gonna take it. It ain't gonna be the guys you want that's gonna get you those wins. And that's the point. That's the point. It's, it's plenty of guys like Jimmy. Like think about this. Joe Johnson out here been robbing the league forever. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> been robbing Robin. the league forever. Robbing. Yes disagree joe johnson joe johnson ain't been robbing disagree. the league get the fuck disagree. out of here oh yeah joe johnson definitely joe johnson been robbing, been the, robbing league. the league disagree. forever this, hell this yeah right now if paxton told joe johnson to come for the bulls they not gonna do a motherfucking thing no no answer my question joe johnson comes to the bulls you ain't gonna be happy I'm not going to have any feelings about it whatsoever because Joe Johnson ain't produced a motherfucking thing in the league since he's been there. What teams has Joe Johnson led to anything, Cliff? What? Which which, which teams has Joe Johnson led to anything? Joe Johnson, Joe Johnson took Atlanta to the playoffs. Was it just Joe Johnson or was it or was uh, Al Horford there along with him? When Al Horford there too? Where Al Horford at right now? In Boston? Doing what? If they needed, no, no. No, this is, you know, no, no, what? And they had old boy too. It's What's his name? Uh, uh, well, not Joe Johnson, but uh, the other guy that was there too. I can't think his name now. Uh. Josh Smith. Well, well, well Josh Smith. We all see what Josh Smith is at, right? Josh Smith came to the Pistons. What happened? He flamed out and he went somewhere else. Like, it's a whole lot of guys who have talent who will take the money, but just because they have talent and will take the money, it doesn't mean that your team gonna do shit with them on your squad. And that's the point that I'm making. Fans, listen, I agree. But what I'm saying is, I'd rather take them dudes that just, that's taking the money than the dudes we got playing right now. I guess. I bet you, I, I'm I, about, I bet you, I bet you would know who the starting five was. I, I bet you would know the Not really. Not really. Oh. I mean, I mean, think, I'm, I'm saying this as I'm saying this as a as a fan. I want my squad to win. I don't want to just go grab some niggas just because they like, yo, he t- he gonna take this money and maybe he'll put up twenty, but we still end up with the same fucking result that we've been getting the last five years. I want to win, dude. What you want to win? What you want to win? The whole shit or be in contention for it, it or be in contention for happen. it. No, no. Let's be realistic. I am being realistic. Let's be, I, I got you. I'm yeah. saying that going out here and just going grabbing some niggas because you got money available don't mean that you're gonna get anything tangible Man. worth watching. Listen. That's what Listen. I'm saying. Listen, the Bulls are not gonna win a chip. Okay, there's a this whole lot of teams baby. that may not win a chip, but I want to be able to watch the shit that I'm. I want to be able to watch the shit, Cliff. 
and that's my I want to be able to feel like we gonna be we got a shot at the shit. I don't want to sit up and be like, yo, hey, at least we got Josh Smith and he gonna score twenty. If, Fuck out of here. Feel like if you want to feel like you got a shot at the chip, take that hat off your head, get some lighter fluid, and burn it. It's not Fuck out of here. It, come on, man. I can tell you right now, four teams that's gonna have a shot at the chip for at least the next five years, and the Bulls ain't even in the conversation. That don't have to be for me to be a fan. Oh, the man, point. Fuck out of here. You you get the fuck out of here. The point that I'm making to you is this: If I'm going to sit up and watch the games, you see, you keep talking about, you keep talking about the money. You keep talking about what well, they got all this money. You keep talking about they got all this money. Everybody in the fucking NBA know they got all this money. Everybody know that shit. So if everybody in the NBA know they got this money, why ain't anybody taking the shit? Why is nobody saying like, yo, I want to take this money that the Bulls got for me? Bad back office. So you making my motherfucking point for me, nigga? I'm with you, but what I'm telling you is, if the back office had any backbone to them, yeah, wipe, wipe your head. You can't even hear what I'm saying. If the if the back office was pimping like they should, they can get anybody. They can get anybody. Detroit sucks ass, and they got Casey, and they gonna build off of that. I guarantee you. They I might. You. They might. Oh, man. They start. It's a whole lot that? of you. You. Man. Think about from somewhere. Think about this. Think about this. All right. Your whole life. We were sitting up here talking about how NBA. And we we talked about this a couple weeks ago. How a lot of these players have the power to move wherever the fuck it is they want to move, and we don't have no problems with the players going wherever it is they want to go. A lot of these players are going to places where they can either get paid or whether or not they can go get a chip. Right. Yeah. So. In that in, in in that whole discussion, a lot of this is well, okay. There's there's some mercenary ass dudes. You got a whole lot of secondary dudes who will go out there like they they they'll 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 get some of these dudes aren't even worth max contracts, but they'll get max contracts. And it, and the end result is your team treading water. Ain't nothing happening for your team. You got this guy. You got this guy who can he, he, you paying him all this money, but your team ain't doing a whole lot of nothing. And right now, if the Bulls can go out, the Bulls can go out and spend a whole lot of money on some secondary dudes and tread water. Because truth be told, a lot of these squad, a lot of these, a lot of these top tier players are not looking at Chicago as a place to go. I get that. That's the whole point that I've been making the entire time. So, With that. so my point is this: me being a fan of the bulls i can say my team is trash and i'm not really wanting to watch a trash ass team at this point i can be realistic about the prospects of my squad however i'm not a fan of hey uh yo we're gonna spend all this money on some secondary ass niggas but we're gonna trade water and not do shit that i am not a fan of and that's what i'm talking about I'm, okay Let, let's I'm a branch off of you. I'm a fan. I don't want to tread water. Matter of fact, let me, let me go back some more. We ain't even tread water. We drowning right now. Okay? The Bulls ain't treading water. They ain't even a 10 seed. We ain't treading. They still in seats. But listen, I want to tread water at least. You say you want to get a chip? The only way you're going to even try or initiate that process is to start treading water. And the way you're going to do that is to spend some bread. You ain't going to do what you're doing or not. In order to get something different, you got to make a change. And what they doing ain't working. Spend the money. That's all you can do. Get That's rid of the front do. office is what you do. Man. Get rid of the, I said, get rid of the front office. Get rid of the front office is what taxes. you do. Okay. And, then, and, and what's the first thing that, that new GM going to do? He going to spend some bread. He Period. might. He Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. He might spend some bread. He might spend some bread if he got it. The Listen, first thing he has to do is the, the first thing get put together is they spend bread. Golden State, the Golden State didn't spend rocking. bread, dog. They developed their own players, dog. Oh, they got KD, man. They okay, they they spent. The hold on, player, hold on. Though. That's the only player. Drafted. Everybody else they drafted, dog. They By built luck. their own fucking By squad. Luck. They By built. Luck. You can call it luck By all you want. How many times you, you get lucky? You want is the fact that they drafted. Hold on. How, how many times you get lucky like that? You get you get. Hold on. They got three. They got lucky three times. They got lucky three times. 
They got lucky on Steph Curry. They got lucky on Draymond Green. They got lucky on Klay Thompson before they got to Kev, uh, Kevin Durant. No, no. We're talking about teams that built a championship squad off of spending money. Let's talk about them. That's what I want to talk about. No, no, Golden State is an exception. Most definitely. I'm with that. I'm with that. Let's talk about the teams that went out here, spent that money, and got what you talking about. How Miami. Many of, Miami. The Bulls. When, when did they do that? Bulls, they went out there when did they do that? Head. Huh? When? When did they do that? The Bulls got Von Harper, Dennis Rodman. They got four all-stars along with Pip. Well, well they, they put a team together by spinning some brains. That was 20 Miami. years ago, Cliff. I'm talking about right now, dog. I'm thinking you about Miami. to tell me. Miami. 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 So why can't the Bulls do it? Because Michael Jordan's not here to go tell me. No, <laughs> they can't Miami. do it. They can't do it because nobody Miami. wants to come play for Chicago right now. Okay, expand. That your means, city ain't cracking. And, and, you know, let me let me say this. I think we might be saying the same thing in a different manner. We got to get rid of John Paxson. Okay? I I agree with that. Period. That's I agree with that. That's where everything starts. That's where everything starts. And I guarantee you, you put that right dude in that chair, people gonna be like, you know what? I'm going to go play for the Bulls. And y'all going to pay me too? I'm coming. You got to change the culture of that. You got to change the culture of that front office, man. And, and that's, that's, that's what John that's, Paxson That's the first go. thing you got to do. That's I'm, the that's first thing you got to do. Tell, tell Cliff and his feelings. Oh, well, he's been going on about the Bulls for a minute now. Listen, I'm a Bulls fan. And it just pisses me off when you see somebody who has so much potential. I agree with fan. Paxson did an awesome job putting that team together. Rose, Noah, all them. They was killing. And then you went from here to the dirt? Come on, man. That ain't that ain't the players. We're gonna change topics, man. We're gonna talk about a whole other a whole other sport. <laughs>